on that throne. With the heaven and the earth fled away, there was nowhere for them to be found. You can't hide from God. Amen. Yesterday we preached the funeral of the young lady. Being on a subject, you must meet your maker. Amen. When we get ready to face him, let's make sure we face him as our offer, our official deliverer for salvation, and someone who will face him as a judge. All right. All right. Amen. Scripture for the occasion will be found. In I John chapter 1, 1 John chapter 1, verses 5 through verse 10. Amen. For the consideration of the Lord's message, we was going to preach from Hebrews chapter 3. God delivered us. All right, all right. Here. All right. We must not pick and choose. That's right. We must be led. By the Holy Spirit of God, the devil has happened to us, and we can't get the message across. All right. All right. Amen. We are the messenger, but he is the message. If you're there, you will find God's written word. First John, way in the back of the book, chapter 1. We began reading at verse 5. We will cease with verse 10. Do you have it? Amen. It reads as follows. This then is the message which we heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness if we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. So we have the reading of the word of God. In the word of God, is already yes. to our Lord and Savior Jesus, our Redeemer, the Christ, to our pastor and his absent, to our deacon staff, ushers, members, musicians, and friends. It's just good to be here Amen. today. From the text reading. It said, if we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not do truth. If we say. Subject for this present time. And that is a whole lot of talking going on. That's all right. That's all right. If 
we see. Well, we like to see the sun. Whole lot of talking going on. In this 10th verse of chapter 1, we see the word printed, seen, three times. In these ten verses of this first chapter, we see the word we printed 20 times. We like to say a whole lot of talking going on. The writer of the book, John, the beloved disciples, penned a letter in the midst of a church where false teachers had crept in. John wanted his readers to know the difference between, between truth and error. John writes that can have the confidence to know that by believing in Jesus Christ, they had eternal life. In John day, there was a Gnostics going around claiming that the physical body was not of vital importance. They claimed that yes, Jesus might be God, but he was some type of family. He was really not flesh. John writes to us, to let us know anyone that does not honor Jesus all right, all right. as being guilty, as coming in the flesh, as being God in the flesh, he labels those as being anti-Christ. There were some that lay claim to honor God, but did not really fully honor Jesus all right, as all right. God in the flesh. All right, all right. We got folk today, different religion that would just say he was just a good prophet. He was just a good teacher. But to us who by faith have the confidence that he is the Son of God. The Savior of our salvation. The one in whom every one of us can commit the keeping of our souls to Him as a faithful creator. In John day was a whole lot of talking going on, but John wanted us to know. That there is something that is vitally important in order to walk in this Christian race. Yeah, yeah. There are some things that we should just know. Some 33 times you will find in this book of John, and we know, and we know, and we know. John. Three, I John 3 and 14 tells us, and we know that we are passed from death unto life because we love the brother. In other words, John said the believer has been transformed, and the identification of our transformation is that God love exists inside of us. You don't speak in tongues, you ain't saved. That's not what I like. My Bible tells me love is the identification mark. And when we are born in love because God is love, He's the very essence of what love is. But John gives to us the pinman of love in action. Since God is love and God is active and God is moving about. He tells us we are 
with love in action because God is happy. to say no man say how can you look up in whom you have not seen and hate your brother who you see every day and the Bible good at calling us a lie we get mad with folks and the Bible gives you a lie and the truth is not in in John 1 and 1 John said that which was from the beginning. John takes us back to eternity past, showing us that Jesus always existed before he was a beginning. He takes us past Genesis 1 and 1 of the created story. In other words, God, Jesus began before he began the creation. In the beginning, which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. John, I'm not writing a fairy tale story. John said, I am an eyewitness. I'm a witness that Jesus did come in the flesh. Jesus told us, we heard him teach, we, we, we witnessed with our eyes, we were, and now that we have him, yeah, we touched him. We see him, we listen to him, and the teach, and now we have the word of life. In other words, every Jesus is the same. And the word. In John 1 and 1, the Bible says, In the beginning was the word. The word was with God, and the word was God. In verse 14, in John 1, it says, And the word was made flesh. And John says, He dwelt among us. And the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John says in verse 2 here, For the life was manifest, and we have seen it. And we bear witness, and we show it unto you, that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested with us. John is saying Jesus existed in eternal depths. With God, even before He came in the flesh, in the book of Daniel, Daniel calls Him the Ancient of David. Amen. He's, he's even older than the first day that He got. So John says, Jesus did begin when He came among us. He existed prior to that. But in that same Jesus, that we have our witness, we, we witness that Jesus brought life. And in him, there is no darkness. In other words, Jesus, essence, the light represents his purity. Light represents the absence of darkness. If you turn all the lights off in this building right now, the building will automatically become dark. But when you turn the light on, the darkness disappears. Jesus was the essence of the God. He had no darkness. Darkness represented evil was in his nature. John says in verse 3, you can read along as we get to our text point. Verse 3 said, That which we have seen and heard, we declare we unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship 
is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. What is John saying to have fellowship with us? In other words, as the believers fellowship together in the midst of a dark and dying world, your fellowship and my fellowship as we join together with others can bring others to a fellowship with us. of you and they see you and I fellowship during this pandemic. All right, all right. Somebody want to know how do you have the courage, the boldness to even come together in time like these. Right. And my brother and sister, you can tell them I'm not trying to be bold in myself. I'm bold because my confidence, my fellowship with God the Father, and I'm not afraid to fellowship one with another. So I come out to the house of God. In spite of what's going on around us, I still love the fellowship. I still, in this fellowship, want somebody else to see that beyond our fellowship, we also have fellowship with God. Right. It is God that unites us by His Spirit. Someone is watching us, church. John speaks to us of being active in our faith. John speaks to us that the believers are continuing to love one another. Because someone who don't know your father is looking at us. John said, that which we have seen, we are now sharing it with you. In other words, John did not share any secondhand information, but he's, he, he's an eyewitness. Because Jesus walked among them. In order for you to tell someone else about who Jesus is, you must have your personal experience. It's a whole lot of talking going on, but we need to stop doing so much talking and do more walking. A light within itself does not talk, but it like shine. Oh, you don't need to go around trying to prove to anybody who you are. All right. Folk will be able to tell who you are by your walk, not by your talk. Right. John said the reason we write this letter unto you. He says in verse 4, and these things write we unto you that your joy may be full. Let me tell you something, saints of God, a whole lot of God's people don't know how important it is to stay full of joy. In order to stay full of joy, you got to stay in fellowship with the one that joy comes from. We sing a song, this joy that I have. The world didn't give it to you. So why do we allow the world circumstances to take our joy away? John write that we need to have confidence that as they continue the fellowship with God and one another in their fellowship, God will increase their joy. We need joy to face the temptations in this world. We need joy to face the tribulations in this world. 
We need joy to even face the racism that exists in this world. So in order for us to experience this type of joy, we got to stop doing so much talking. And doing some walking. It's a whole lot of talking going on. But I come to find out talk is cheap. It don't cost you nothing but a little bit of God's breath and ain't doing But John wants to encourage us. In verse 5, he said, Then, this is the message which we heard of him. And John said, We declare and we preach this message unto you that God is light. And in him, there's not one ounce of darkness. But John wants us to know in verse 6. But we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness. We lie and do not the truth. In other words, when we say we have fellowship and live our lives apart from walking with God. Yeah, John said there is no truth in that. It's just a whole lot of talking going on. Now this text doesn't have anything to do. Darkness here does not represent a loss of your salvation. Darkness represents a loss of being in fellowship with God. A child of God can be born again. And yes, walk in darkness. In other words, you can have a biological son or daughter. And biological land, they can be yours because they have your DNA. But also, you and your individual child may not even speak one to another. They're still your child, but they have broken. Fellowship. In other words, John writes to us that we ought to be careful of our relationship one with another. Our relationship with each other determines our fellowship with God. In other words, we can't walk any kind of way and be in fellowship with God. In Amos 3 and 3, Amos asks a question. He said, how can two walk together except they be in agreement? My brothers and my sisters, God is a holy God. But we walk in the light. Pray with this church. We have fellowship one with another. That's why the church is so divided today. I'm talking about the members of the local bodies. The members of Christ are so divided today because it's impossible for us to have real fellowship with each other if we have broken fellowship who is God? The evidence is clear why there's so much fighting among God's people. And the reason is because too many of God's own people are not walking with God. But John says that we walk in the light. We have fellowship through the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, and he cleanses us 
from all sin. Now we recognize the fact this has nothing to do with salvation. Because if you're already born again, you already been cleansed once. But this has to do with the ongoing clean. In other words, just because you took a bath yesterday, it don't mean you don't need another one today. You might be saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. But my brothers and my sisters, as we journey through this sinful world, we got to realize we still live in the presence of sin. And every now and then, uh, sin will trip us up. But John said, if we confess our sins, in other words, uh, our confession must be a true confession. In other words, it won't do no good for you to say, Lord, if I did any wrong, forgive me for the wrong I did. In other words, your sin must be personal. What I'm trying to tell you, if you robbed the bank, you need to say, God, forgive me for robbing the bank. If you sanitize my name, you need to go personal and say, Lord, forgive me for sanitizing the name of the individual. Because we're not fooling nobody else. And John says uh, that the word of God is not in us. I'm glad to know that God will forgive your sins. And we must realize that we have to go down on our knees and tell them all, I'm sorry for what I said. I'm sorry for what I did. And you must tell God on a personal basis that God already knows. And I'm so glad that we got too many people that he did not have to do a whole lot of talking.
we can't really have true fellowship with the Father. If you can't have fellowship with the Father, you're not going to have fellowship with each other. It starts with God and ends with God. How people treat you is exactly how they treat God. What kind of respect to God they end up with? The source of God, He is the author and the finisher. Continue that fellowship with you as our fellowship.